And thank you all uh, so much uh, for being here with us. Uh, it's always good to be here on the ground with, with our heroes under the headset. Uh, everything in regards to emergencies and the needs of our public, it hits here first, and then it goes to the respective agencies after. So the work that goes on here is really second to none in the city of New Orleans. And when you talk about public safety and our Orleans Parish Communications District is central uh, to the public safety team uh, that governs truly the city of New Orleans. And it doesn't happen without leadership. And I am just so pleased every time I encounter a leadership that I put in place here for OPCD, and that is under Director Tyrell Morris. So thank you so much for your uh, continued leadership, uh, innovation, creativity that you've brought to OPCD from the start, and where it just transcends not just the OPCD office, our entire public safety team, from the New Orleans Police Department, EMS, fire, Homeland Security. That's how we meet every single week and even twice a week because we take our work very seriously. But we also take partnerships very seriously. And we have had a strong and unwavering partnership with AT&T Louisiana. I am so proud to be standing here yet once again announcing something great for the city of New Orleans and quite frankly, the state of Louisiana because we're the first with this partnership. Now, what this is all about, and I think the timing could not be better, particularly because we have faced so many challenges uh, in the city of New Orleans in a short period of time, it's two years time. But we've met them head on with the direction, passion, with empathy, with innovative thinking and creativity that has been able, enabled us to get through and be better because of it. So with this COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through still in the heightened uh, area of hurricane season, this is where we are right now, and even post cyber attack, we have learned the importance of technology and continuing to innovate in this space. This partnership with AT&T is allowing us to do just that. SCNet, again with AT&T, is going to allow us and our heroes under that headset to do more incredible work than they already do every single day. Uh, this citywide, their ability, those heroes now, their ability to provide our residents, even our visitors, with the help they need when they need it. Uh, this SENET provides access to the next gen, next generation, 911 capabilities. That's what it's all about building for the future. And you have heard me say over and over again that the top priority in this city is and a part of infrastructure is telecommunications, it's front and center. But you can't have it if you're not expanding and growing uh, technology. And it comes to us through NextGen 911. I'm going to turn it over uh, to our director, Tyrell Morris, and give him the opportunity, because uh, he, uh, he gets so excited about this, but he gets excited because he knows that this will help us help our people much better. And then we're already doing every single day. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our fierce leader, who I call Hollywood. Because <laughs> he's always bringing new innovation, keeping us new. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Mayor, thank you very much for your leadership. Very turbulent times and keeping us focused on the mission. Um, when we took over the administration here at OPCD, I was given a task, and it was to make us great and keep pushing us to the next place forward. And it's so crazy that when I talk to the staff here at OPCD about their experience 
we commemorate the 15 year um, anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, where 911 in this city failed. Flat out went out. If you called 911, no one answered. The phone didn't even ring. And the FCC has placed some guidelines before every 911 center in the United States that we have to be prepared for those types of emergencies. Hurricanes are getting stronger, disasters are getting more frequently, and we have to be ready for those. And so upgrading our over 50 year old infrastructure in 911 in this city across the state to completely replace it with this new IP based, very robust, very secure ExiNet will help us ensure our people that when they call 911, your call will always get answered. Currently today in the old infrastructure, some pain points that we see, calls get misrouted because we're routing calls based upon a cell phone tower. Um, but we need available for us to know exactly what building you're standing in and sometimes what floor. That technology is now coming into the 911 center. The ESINET also allows us for future innovations. Right now we have text to 911. Soon we can have picture to 911, video to 911, FaceTime to 911. All those things are coming down the road, but that we cannot use those benefits if we do not upgrade our infrastructure. Um, and so we are proud to be the first parish in the state of Louisiana to make this move. As you know, OPCD constantly leans forward and provides leadership and guidance to the rest of our parishes throughout the state. And we've heard from over 20 of them who plan on writing this agreement so they can make the same swift adjustment as well. And so again, we're providing leadership, we're paving the way. I want to take a moment to thank the OPCD technology team under the leadership of Mr. Carl Fassold, our director of technology, um, who really makes sure that even at two o'clock in the morning, when the phone rings, it gets answered. Um, our mission here is very simple, to get the right people to the right place at the right time, but we strive to do it better than anyone else in the world. And we can only do that if we lead with an innovative mind. Um, we have to think outside the box. I can't, every week we get a new challenge. How are we gonna figure this one out? Um, but we welcome those challenges. We embrace those challenges. We look forward to celebrating the successes when we, when we solve those challenges. Um, so again, thank you to our partners at AT&T for making this a reality for us. Um, and again, this is all about the future and we are here to serve. Um, and we know that New Orleans is unique. We see over 18 million visitors a year. And while they are here, the safety of each and every one of those rests in the hands of the heroes inside this building. And so if we cannot do the basic thing by answering the phone. So thank you very much. At this time, I'm gonna ask Mr. David Aubrey, uh, Regional Executive Vice President of AFC Louisiana to come and speak to us uh, about this project. Thank you, Mr. Aubrey. Good afternoon. To our Honorable Mayor, to our fearless leader, Mr. Morris, and to uh, all who have assembled, uh, I stand on behalf of AT&T uh, certainly to acknowledge this outstanding partnership that we are most honored to be able to collaborate with OP Communications District uh, mm -hmm. to help launch. That's the way you'd normally say it. <laughs> OPCD. There you go. Got to get it rolling off my tongue. But this is an awesome opportunity. Yeah, I stand here to reflect the Mayor Kentrell came to office and immediately we got a chance to visit with her and she was very intentional in her directive uh, to us to do more, to go above and beyond, to be great partners. AT&T has been a partner uh, with the city of New Orleans for more than a hundred years. We've been in this community operating, but I will tell you in the last couple of years, we have stepped up our collaboration, our investments, and we are so excited to extend it even further with this outstanding partnership. You know, when there was uh, questions about access to technology in the last two years have opened up our doors in New Orleans East, on South Claiborne, in Gentilly, and other areas across this city. Keeping those sales tax dollars from going into the metro area in the city core, Mayor, when people talk about the opportunities that were being lost in New Orleans East, we launched uh, Believe New Orleans with an intentional purpose on reinvesting in people, partnering with NOLA BA, the East New Orleans Business Improvement District, the NORD Foundation, and others to make sure that we're intentional about uplifting the community, giving those residents an opportunity to improve their quality of life. We're investing in technology, laying fiber all around in this area. We've definitely done it in some of the hard to reach areas. During this pandemic, we understand food and access to those resources became an issue. Uh, second harvest, we immediately uh, uh, launched and dropped resources in to help them along with Hands-On New Orleans 
and many other organizations. And we didn't stop there. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we announced a partnership with STEM NOLA for $100,000 to improve distance learning, to make sure those students have that out of the classroom, uh, science, technology, engineering, math uh, experiences through an organization birthed right here in New Orleans that will be traveling the world. This project is going to be uh, even more providing that more targeted response to help save time and improve outcomes when someone dies 911, addressing the unexpected call volumes. You know, we just experiencing uh, disaster like they're here all the time nowadays in Louisiana. And I, we're dealing with, I was over in Lake Charles on yesterday, and our network has performed immeasurably. And we are super excited. Uh, but when those disasters do happen, there are a huge amount of call volumes. And this technology would allow the communication district to better route uh, to alternate sites, you know, whether they be locally or anywhere across the world. And then maintain service during the natural disaster, and even those that just happened, and uh, you've not without What's most important today is you're the first. You're leading the way. Uh, when Mr. Morris came on board, I would <laughs> He was tough. He demanded a lot, and I will tell you this team from AT&T uh, the local team as well as our corporate team out of Dallas has stepped up to the plate to help us to get to this point for this partnership. We have done what we're supposed to do. AT&T was the first communications company to launch 5G in the uh, city of New Orleans. And we not only invest in this infrastructure, but we are invested in people. I am joined today by our regional director, I should say former mayor. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, he was recently promoted. Uh, <laughs> And so he will be uh, assuming a role as a director of external affairs in Kansas for Michael Ruffin. And today is his birthday. Oh, happy, oh, birthday. happy birthday. Yay. And then I'm also joined by our state local education team. One of the members, uh, Tim Trammell yes. and Sybil Brown, uh, works in uh, a mobility overlay, working with uh, state local education all around the state. And then a uh, new resident, but she's not new anymore. <laughs> she's been here a while. She's a, a colleague of mine that's really handling the 150 or so distribution footprint leading efforts here in New Orleans. Uh, our uh, Vice President, Assistant VP, Jared Felder, uh, and uh, she's doing an awesome job. And uh, we wanted you to know that we are partners. We're partners not only on this project, but we are definitely partnering in the, in the whole space of first responder. And Mayor, it's because of your leadership, your setting high expectations, you're holding company AT&T accountable for not just providing these contractual services, but investing in this community and its people. We know that New Orleans is a better place because of your leadership. And I want to thank you and Mr. Morris for all what you do. We're happy to be here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right, so let's, uh, this, is, this is great. I'm feeling the love. Feel the heat, feel the beat in my heart. Thank you so much. It's, it's a real thing. You can't make it up. So just on, on the count of three, you want to just do a quick little bam, like sure. bam? bam. All right, let's cut the ribbon that we don't have. We don't need it. All right, so y'all go with me on that. All right, on three. One, two, three. Bam! All right, good job. Are there any questions, anything? But Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, I'm at Air Force Sergeant. I work on high-frequency antennas, microwaves, and radar. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on what it is? Uh, you, talk about, you talked about 5G. Are we talking fiber optic cables or installing more antennas? Come tell them a little bit more about it. <laughs> yeah, so right now the 911 calls are routed uh, based on lines in the ground in a cellular connection we call selective router. That means a lot of the infrastructure has to physically be on the ground, and so when a, a selective router switch goes down because of a disaster, usually the region goes down. Um, what we're doing here is the ESINET is an emergency services internet network. And so we're pretty much taking the routing network and putting it in the cloud. Um, and so therefore, no matter where we are, so the system is designed, and an example I will give you, um, uh, two Mardi Gras ago we had a, a tragedy on Esplanade Avenue, and this particular agency, uh, when the incident occurred, took 80 calls in four minutes. Our phone system physically, I don't think a 911 center in the world physically can handle all those calls coming into the system at the same time. 
that the system. The ESI net will then know, hey, something has happened. Let me route these calls to a nearby PSAP that are overflowing so the call at least gets answered. So our neighboring emergency communication centers automatically will get picked up. Or if the system detects that our center goes down for some reason, power outage, some kind of disaster takes it out of commission, we don't have to, right now we have to call someone and say, hey, then 911 is down, which takes a couple minutes to switch the system over. This will be automated. I did have a brief go here because the technology uh, malfunctioned here, and we had to call someone to quit. Five minute process where we tend to potentially have no 911 lose in five minutes. And every call is important, and that one call may be the one call that saves someone's life. And so we have an obligation to make sure every call gets answered each and every time those three digits are, are dialed. The other piece you mentioned, I want to take a moment to talk about FirstNet. Um, this is the first time that the city of New Orleans has transitioned all of our public safety agencies, the mobile CAD technology, the computer-aided dispatch system, we transitioned it to the FirstNet network that's built by AT&T. That is a federal government obligation that says they are responsible legally to make sure the network is redundant during times of emergency. So the public safety agencies now have a direct connection from us to them in the field on their own independent network. They are not riding on your cell phone network. They do have priority and preemption, so that means that the decision, if the system has to make a choice what call gets through, it's gonna be ours. But in most cases, particularly for Mardi Gras, we saw incredibly slow speed because so many people were using the commercial network. This year for Mardi Gras, we had no impact inter interruption at all. Um, so that was the true trend for us to see if AT&T worked like they said it would, and it did. It outperformed more um, than it exceeded our expectations. Thank you. And it really is just consistent with how we are approaching things across the board in the city relative to our infrastructure, placing things more on the cloud. Going through that cyber attack, what saved us significantly was that prior to that, we had already began switching our financials to the cloud. Even as it relates to getting off of having to hit a switch with sewage and water board, wanting that to be again. So we are, this is our focus across the board when it comes to infrastructure, being more innovative and creative and bold. People, literally, for the next generation. So thank you all so much. All right.